Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. I'm thinking that music is in the universe. You know, the way the patterns, the way the stars move, everything out there. So to bring it down to earth here, we have these sounds that are um, organic and you have strings and you have uh, percussion instruments, horns that use wind, and all this stuff creates music and in a variety of ways and a variety of sounds. And I think it's important for everybody to at least listen to music and to enjoy it. All the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. such a winter's day. Well, we start back at the beginning. I started with trumpet at eight years old and played that through eighth grade. And I kind of had enough of that because it was a single tone instrument. I wanted to hear more sounds that I could make at one time. So about a year later, I got a guitar in high school and uh, had a band by the end of high school, played almost every weekend, continued through college. I even got a minor in music at San Jose State. Then I lived in the Bay Area for about four years before I went on to graduate school in Hawaii. And at graduate school, I had a program called HCAP, Community Action Program. And I was placed there, and one of the women in the office there was a great singer, and she played the uke and guitar, and we put a little band together. And so she taught us how to sing Hawaiian music to pronounce the words correctly and the feel. And so we, we went out and gigged, four of us, for several uh, gigs for four or five years, I guess. And then, um, so I finally graduated, and then uh, after that, it took a little while to get a job, so then I decided to go to Japan with a band in 1978 for three months, came back, and still had a little trouble. Finally, in, in the fall, I got a job at the uh, Waikiki Community Center, and I was the program director for the senior program. And within that, I had a senior citizen band with uh, a bunch of the elderly mostly women, and we played at the hotels, and just for free. You know, we had rehearsals every week, and I was in charge of that. And um, that, after two years, got kind of old, and so I went on and I, I joined up with a, a guy named Nick Masters who had played many years with Bill Haley. And uh, from there, we had a, a duo, trio, quartet, and five-piece band. We did oldies, mostly country, though. Country was crazy big in Hawaii in the 80s. Then after that, I got into computer music with a partner, and we did two albums, and, uh, and then that led to about 1988, and then I moved back to the mainland here, continued doing music, and also introduced magic into the, to the uh, mix with the Music and a Magic show. And then my little son, who was th not even three, I guess, he started imitating me one day, and I made him a bunch of magic things, and he started performing. <laughs> Somebody approached me at the Sea Country Community Center about starting an ukulele class. And so I got one off the ground. I had three days a week. And some of those people started getting pretty good. And so I opened up an intermediate level. And as that progressed, we uh, were getting pretty solid with a lot of different tunes and a lot of challenging songs. And then I threw out one night, why don't we get a band together? And so we put a little band of five women and myself and we needed a name, so we called it the Big Sisters Ukulele Band. And the origin of that is that they're all taller than me, and they're all older than me, except for one. Okay? And that's Kathy. She's younger. But that was the criteria to get in the band. You had to be taller and older. Big Sisters Ukulele Band. Okay? Sings of the love I you 
how did I get interested in the one-man band? I visited Santa Cruz, where my sister was living in 1984, and a guy was setting up to do a concert at the music store. And I came back later on and heard this amazing sound with one guy twiddling knobs and making this whole band sound. So I said, that's for me. I sent to Hawaii for some money, and I got started with computer music. And Michael Jackson, Madonna, and a lot of people of that era, the early 80s, were doing recordings in studios that way. About two years later, I got in, into a, a partnership with a guy who was a little bit ahead of me. He was a drummer, and he had better skills at programming the computer. And so we, we had a duo for a few years in Hawaii. We put out two albums, a Christmas album and a rock album. And we played everything from Jimi Hendrix to uh, Duke Ellington. Again, that's where I also blossomed, I think, in, in learning more jazz tunes, was working with him. And then when I moved back here, I continued on. I sometimes work with a horn player, tenor sax player, and I've had several really good ones. So we go out as a duo. It sounds nice and full because of the computer background. So what I do is I program bass, drums, keyboard parts, horn parts, strings, whatever the song calls for, and I just arrange it on my own. And that's the beauty of having computer music. You can do arrangements uh, as you hear them, and you have that flexibility without trying to get five musicians in a room and work it out that way. You can just start programming. They tell me, son, now you're living in the past. The music I love is gonna last and last. Hey, Jerry Lee gave it that shake and be. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.